Our Garden, From Seeds to Harvest in a School Garden by George Ancona. The school bell sounds and the classroom explodes with the noise of books closing, chairs sliding on the floor, and kids chattering. It's time for recess. The students head outside to the school garden. Mrs. McCarthy, the third grade teacher, dreamed of having a school garden. She talked to the other teachers, the principal, and the parents about it. They all work together to make her dream come true. The garden is cared for by Miss Sue. Miss Sue's husband, Will, designed the layout of the garden. College students Paul, Danielle, Autumn, and Allie volunteer to guide the children in the garden projects. Students enter the garden through an arbor. It's spring and there's lots of chores to be done. Depending on the weather, some classes are held in the open classroom, the garden, or the greenhouse. In early spring, Miss Sue asked the students to make a book with pictures they cut out from seed catalogs. These are the flowers, fruits, and vegetables that the students would like to grow. Later, she and the students will decide where to plant them. Every day, one student is asked to take a bucket of food scraps from lunches and snacks and dump it into the compost pile. The compost is made up of soil, dead plants, and food scraps. Inside the pile, red wriggler worms are busy eating and turning these ingredients into castings. Compost is mixed into the garden beds to provide food for seedlings. Springtime is planting time. These are a few of the seeds that will be planted in the garden. When it's cold outside, some seeds are planted in the greenhouse. There, students fill small plastic pots with rich soil and plant a seed in each pot. The pots are left in the greenhouse. The sun warms them. Soon, tiny seedlings begin to pop out of the soil. When they are bigger and the weather is warmer, the plants will be transplanted into the garden beds outside. Flowers, vegetables, and fruits are planted in the beds of rich, composted earth. A teepee made of bamboo poles stands in the middle of the garden. Some students plant pole bean seeds at the base of each pole. The plants will grow up the teepee and sprout their pods. Meanwhile, in the morning shade of the school, Paul hands out seeds to plant in a waffle bed. The bed's low walls of adobe bricks help keep water in. Another group of students plants squash seedlings. Danielle helps a student transplant a tomato seedling. Once the seeds and seedlings are in the ground, the beds are watered and covered with a mulch of straw. This helps to keep the soil from drying out. A lot of water is needed to keep the garden healthy. When it rains, water flows off the roof, down a drain pipe, and into an underground tank called a cistern. A solar panel on the roof of the outdoor classroom creates electricity to run the pump that draws water from the cistern. One of the student's favorite jobs is watering the garden. Miss Sue fills the colorful watering cans for, for them. The tomato plants are surrounded by plastic tubes filled with water. During the day, the sun warms the water in the tubes. At night, the tubes provide the warmth that tomato roots need to grow. When there is no rainwater in the cistern, a hose attached to an outdoor faucet is used to keep the soil moist and plants healthy. While the plants are growing during the warm spring days, there is still a lot of work to do in the garden. Students mix sand, dirt, water, and cut up straws to make adobe bricks. The bricks are used to make the low walls for waffle beds. In the southwest, adobe bricks are still used to build homes. Adobe is also used to coat the horno, the traditional oven used to bake bread. Every spring, the horno in the corner of the outdoor classroom gets a fresh coat of adobe. There are many different plants in the herb garden, such as basil, chives, and sage. Every plant has its own taste and smell. Radishes are harvested in the spring. Miss Sue asks some students to pick the radishes. After washing the dirt off them, the children bite into the bright red vegetables. One girl finds hers too spicy, and drops it into the compost pile. More food for the worms. 
On special afternoons and weekends, the garden becomes a place where the school community gathers. Students come back with their family and friends. They compost, seed, plant, transplant, weed, water, and dig. By now, the flowers are blooming and the beds are green. The garden is flourishing with so much care. Garden chores continue into the summer. School is closed, but the garden is a beehive of activity. It provides the setting for music and gatherings of children, grown-ups, friends, and families. The music fills the garden with joy. By August, many of the fruits and vegetables are ripe. Cooking and eating becomes an ongoing activity in the garden. The father helps the children's children make pizzas on one community day. First, they mix and punch the dough. Then they roll it out with a rolling pin. Next, they pour oil on the flat dough. Ripe tomatoes are cut up and go on top. And last, of course, is the grated cheese. After a hot fire burns down the horno, the pizza goes in. When the sizzling pizza is taken out, a group of hungry gardeners appears. The slices disappear like magic. Fortunately, there are many more pizzas to come. Summer is over and another school year begins. The leaves on the trees are turning color and many of the garden's fruits and vegetables are ready to be picked. Students take turns disappearing into the teepee to pick pole beans from the vines. One of the garden beds was planted on a traditional, in a traditional Native American way. It's called a three sisters garden. Corn is planted together with pinto beans and squash. The bean vines grow up the corn stalks. The corn and squash leaves shade the soil to keep it moist. Pinto beans are harvested after the pods dry up and turn tan. Cabbages are a real challenge to pick. Their long, strong roots test the strength of some of the bigger kids. Lemon cucumbers, also called apple cucumbers, are a new experience for many of the students. The children like them because they can eat, be eaten like apples. In the Three Sisters Garden, the strawberry corn is ready for harvesting. The ears are taken off the stalks and husks, husked. Then the kernels are picked off the cob and saved in a jar. Later, the kernels are heated in oil and turned into a delicious popcorn snack. The students are delighted. The harvest becomes a chance for Miss Sue to quiz the students on the variety of crops the garden has produced. She makes a game of the quiz, placing the answers face down on slips of paper under each fruit, vegetable, or herb. To celebrate the end of the harvest, a series of lunches is prepared with many of the garden's vegetables. These become festivals of good food and fun. The last community day of the year brings students and families together to prepare the garden for winter. The air is crisp and cold. Frost has turned the trees to gold. Winds have scattered many leaves to the ground. The green plants of summer are shriveled and brown. Dead plants are yanked out of the ground and put into the compost pile. Compost is strained and mixed into the soil. The strawberry plants and beds are mulched with straw and all is ready to be covered with a blanket of snow. Sleep tight garden until next year. <laughs>